Today we're going to look at the x-intercepts of uh, quadratics. Um, so uh, x-intercepts um, are the same as zeros, so I'm going to be saying zeros a lot, go and find the zeros, but essentially what I'm saying is go and find the x-intercepts. So we'll look at uh, the first example here. Um, so in the past few lessons you have been factoring uh, quadratics, so you'll get it to look like this. And then uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to graph this and show you um, that you can actually look at these equations and find where the x-intercepts of the zeros are. Okay, so let's just start with the first one. Um, so just uh, Google Desmos. Okay, so D-E-S-M-O-S, -S, like that. Okay, go to the, um, yeah, just go to Desmos here, whatever comes up first, and then start graphing. Sometimes the, the graphing um, program just comes up right away. So anyway, click on that open it up and then you should see this, okay? So what you're trying to do here is you're going to put in uh, y equals, and again you don't need to write in the y equals but if you want to you can, and then I'm just typing this in, okay? And then uh, again if you're using your phone, uh, I just wanted to remind you that down here, I'll just make this smaller here, um, so down here, there's that keyboard function that you can click on, and then it's easy to click in uh, and write in the equation, okay? All right, so uh, we have y plus 2 and y, uh, or sorry, x plus 2 bracket x minus 5, okay? So if we graph that, here it is. So taking a look here, I just want to zoom out a bit so we can see a bit better here. Um, so we want to know where the uh, x-intercepts for this uh, graph um, are found. So if we kind of zoom in here. Okay, so see the first one here? It's at, so if I hover over the point, negative 2, 0, and the other one is 5, 0. Okay, so let's just write those on, on here right now. Okay, so if uh, you type this graph into, the, into Desmos, you're finding that the points are negative 2, 0, and uh, 5, 0. Okay, so I want you to take a look and see if there is some sort of connection with the equation, okay? All right, so I'm going to just, uh, you know, plot another one here and then see if you guys can figure out if there is some sort of um, uh, pattern or a rule that you can use in order to find uh, the x-intercepts without um, actually um, graphing them, okay? So just a reminder here, zeros, that's the same as x-intercepts, okay? All right, so let's just go and graph the next one. All right, so we're going to put in y equals bracket x minus 3 and bracket x minus 7. Okay, and then the other one's still there, so you could just click on the colored circle and turn it off. So it'll still be there, but you can just hide it. All right, so uh, here's this one now. So where, what are the uh, x-intercepts? So if we close up here. So if we hover over the point, it's 3, 0, and 7, 0. Okay, so let's write those in. Okay, so, um, so uh, we'll get to these next two in a sec, but all right, so let's see if we can make some sort of connection here. So if we're looking at this uh, first uh, quadratic relation here, we saw that it was x plus 2. So what happened to the uh, the uh, x-intercept of the 0? Oh, it, it's negative 2. Okay, so the connection that we're making here is that it's negative 2. Okay, and what about this one? It's minus 5, and we're seeing that it's positive 5 on the graph, okay? So that's what you're going to be doing today. Whenever you see the factored form like this, you're popping out the opposite sign. Okay, so here it was plus 2 in the factor, but then when you are going to go and state the zeros, you just tell me the opposite sign, the same number but the opposite sign. Okay, here's minus 5, so you just say, oh, x is 5, like that. Okay, so that's how you're going to write the zeros today. You just go x equals the number. Okay, x equals the number. So here, when we graph this one, we found that the points were 3 and 7. So again, when we pop this one out, we just pop out the opposite sign, 3, 
and this one is seven, like that. Okay, so those are the zeros. Those are the x-intercepts. So if I, you know, even without graphing this now, you can go, oh, the it's the opposite sign. Okay. All right. Um, here's the next one. We're gonna graph this one as well, and see where are we gonna find the zero. So I'm gonna turn that one off, and so we have x times uh, x plus six. Okay, and then you can put in the y equals. You don't have to though. All right, so here's the graph now. So where are the uh, uh, x-intercepts now? So we're finding one is at negative six zero, and the other one is at zero zero. Okay, so let's write those in. Okay, so let's see if maybe you can try to predict this one before you graph it. Okay, where would those ones be? All right, turn that one off. Y equals. And x minus 8, right? Yeah. All right, so let's take a look here. And again, here's the graph. Here is one of the intercepts, 0, 0, 8, 0. Okay, let's write those in. All right, so there are the two points. So let's see how they connect to the factors here. So here's this one. You see x plus 6. So it's the same as what we did up there. The opposite pops out, negative 6. So the other one here, and again, we're looking at the x value that comes out, right? Like here, x value, x value. So um, the x value that's coming out is zero. So out of this one, whenever you just see x like that alone, it's going to be zero. Okay. All right. So when we do this one here, there's that one that's just x. Then there's the x minus 8. So out of this one, the zero is zero. And this one here, it's the opposite sign, positive 8. Okay, so that's what you're doing today. You're just, um, if you're already in factored form, you're just going to pop out the opposite sign, or if it's just x, just pop out a zero, and these are the zeros that you have to state, okay? And again, um, if you're trying to figure out what, what, what just happened there, it's because if you actually graph them, that's where you would find that the, uh, the problem will actually hit the x-axis here. All right, so let's uh, move on to the next one here. So we'll call this example two. So I want you to factor it first, and then I want you to um, uh, go through and find the zeros, okay? So the nice thing about example one here was that they were already factored, okay? They're already in those, you know, you did the product sum table, and then you already got the two factors like that. So this one here, I need you to do that before we can actually go and find the zeros, okay? So um, again, so this is a review from last day. Um, step one, always look for the greatest common factor. Okay, so just kind of think and brainstorm. All of these numbers, 4, 4, and 168, what is, it, what is the greatest uh, factor number that I can divide out of all of those? So usually what I do is I look for the lowest one and try to divide them out of all of them here. Okay, so 168, can, that, um, can a 4 divide out of it? Let's check. Yes, it can. So uh, the greatest common factor is 4. And then just check that there's no letters. Okay, no, this one doesn't have a letter, so we can't uh, divide out a letter. All right, so we're going to just divide out the 4. Okay, so do that there. All right, write y equals again. Put the greatest common factor out here. And now go through 4 divided by 4, cancels out, leaves an x squared. Next one, 4 divided by 4, cancels out, leaves just an x. All right, and this one here, if you divide that, that becomes negative 42. Okay, so again, um, don't just stop here uh, just because you got part of it factored out. Now what I want you to do is go through and factor it out using the sum and product tables. Remember, this is the sum, okay, and then this one here is the product. Okay, so sum, I mean like the one that adds up, the one that multiplies up, okay? All right, so let's make that table here. So we need to add up to... Remember, there's like there's no number here, so it's a one, okay? And we need to multiply to negative 42. Those are the conditions, okay? What two numbers will work here? So again, just go through and you know list off all the factors. Okay, I can't add or subtract to get one, so let's try um, 42 times two, or I divided by two, 
So um, 2 and 21 will make 42, but it can't be added or subtracted to make 1. Okay, so keep trying here. 42 divided by 3, that works, but it can't be, uh, we can't make a 1 with it, okay? All right, so keep going. So I need a bit more space here. Um, so yeah, just keep kind of going through all the factors. Use your factor table as well and see if that helps you. Okay, um, so 42 divided by 4. Okay, no, it's a decimal. 42 divided by 5, no. But 42 divided by 6 works, and that will be 6 times 7. Okay, so we have um, some factors here that will multiply to 42, but we need to tweak and add to uh, negative or to positive 1. Okay, so right now, because we need a negative 42, one of these has to be negative. So let's try all the different options here. Okay, and both of these will uh, will multiply to negative 42, but which one will add to positive 1? Okay, this is the one that will work. All right, so those are the two factors that we're going to factor this equation into. So we're going to write our 4, and then we're going to go x minus 6, x plus 7, like that. Okay, so we have our factors. And then now I want you to find the zeros. So that's what we did. So this is what we did last day, but now the new stuff here is just find the zeros. So I'm just gonna change to a different color here. All right, so all you're gonna do is look at this factor here and tell me what would pop out of there and what would pop out of here, okay? So remember, you just go x equals, and then you pop out the opposite sign. So it's just pop out that number with the opposite sign. So negative six becomes six. So that's one of the zeros. This one is positive seven or plus seven inside. So when it pops out, it becomes negative seven. Okay, there you go. And if you go and graph it in Desmos, you'll find that those are the, uh, the intercepts. Okay, so actually let's try that right now. Okay, so turn this one off, put this one in. So y equals four x squared plus, oops, plus four x subtract 168. Okay, so there's your equation. Now let's look at the graph. All right, we need to zoom out a bit here. Pretty big graph. Okay, all right, so if we zoom in here, so you know these are the two intercepts, and then uh, you could just hover over the point. So see it's negative 7 and positive 6. And that's what we have, negative 7, positive 6. Okay, so that's a nice quick way of finding the uh, the zero, the x-intercepts, okay? But we have to just get it to the factored form. That's important. So if it's already here, pop it out. If it's not, factor it out first. Use the uh, you know the adding and multiplying table, and then we get to there, okay? All right, so we'll kind of practice a few more here. Um, but if you do kind of get the general idea of what you're supposed to do here, um, you can move on to the next example in the video, okay? All right, so let's uh, try this one now. Okay, so we're going to go through the steps again. I'll always start and try to see if there is a greatest common factor. Okay, so I'm taking a look here. The lowest one's a 3. Can I divide a 3 out of everybody? Yes. And then uh, another issue here is, see how it's negative? We never want that first one to be negative, so let's divide out a negative 3. Okay, all right, so, and there's no x's here that we can divide out because 48 doesn't have an x. Okay, so we'll write the GCF out here. These two cancel out, it becomes x squared. Okay, now be careful here, 24 divided by negative three is negative eight, and then brings the x. Negative divided by negative is positive. 48 divided by three is 16. Okay, so then you're like, oh, I must be done. Nope, okay, make our, uh, your product, you're adding. Um, so this is the one you have to add to this is the one you have to multiply to, okay? Make that table up now. So over here on the side, we're gonna, uh, our conditions are we have to add to, oh, be careful, negative eight, okay? And then you have to multiply to positive 16. So those are the conditions. What two numbers will work here? All right, so go through one times 16. No, that's not gonna make eight. Uh, two times eight. Nope, that will make eight. Three, Nope, three doesn't work. Four, four times four. Okay, that will make 16, uh, but then we have to make negative eight. So what's the other possibility here we can use? Because we need to have positive 16, um, is to make them both negative. 
okay, because these positive fours won't add up to negative 8, but these negative fours, if you add them together, will make negative 8. Okay, so we found our two factors, and so now let's write it out. Oops. Okay, so we have uh, so we have a negative four and another negative four like that. Okay, so if I ask you to uh, provide the x-intercepts, you're just going to pop out the opposite signs here. So again, don't worry about the fact that there's this three or four out here. It doesn't affect the x-intercepts. We do need to get it factored out. We need to find the GCF and factor it out. But then the stuff that's left over is what controls uh, what the intercepts are. Okay. So here we have positive 4 and another positive 4. Okay, so you're like two of the same ones. So let's graph that and see what that looks like, okay? Um, okay, so we'll turn this one off and we'll type in uh, y equals negative 3x squared oops, uh, plus 24x minus 48. All right, so we'll graph that here, and here is what the graph looks like. So if we zoom in here, so the parabola goes up, hits the x-intercept, and then goes down. So really there's only one intercept if you think of it that way, and it's the same one. It goes up, hits it, and then goes back down. It, it won't hit it twice like the other ones, like for example if we turn this one on, this one hit it twice because it went down and came back up and hit the x-axis again. But there are some that are like the one we just graphed where, yeah, it'll go up, hit the x-intercept or axis, and then just go straight back down and doesn't hit it again, okay? So that's why we have one where, yeah, the intercepts are the exact same. Okay, so now that we've seen those ones, um, I'm just going to give you some other ones that look a little bit different from these ones here. These ones, are, I think, are the most work and probably the trickiest, but... These ones are a little bit simpler. All right, so just go through again and find the greatest common factor. Okay, so uh, no number works here, but you can divide out an x out of both of them. So let's go through and do that. Okay, and if you do that, this is what you get. So you're going to write y, y equals, write the greatest common factor outside, and then go x squared divided by x is x, and then we have 8x uh, divided by x. Uh, the x's cancel out and just leave an 8, okay? All right, and this is just like what we saw up here at the beginning when it's as simple like that. What happens when it's just x by itself? And what happens when you have an x minus 8 here, okay? So here you get a 0. Here you get positive 8. Okay, and then you're done because that's your goal. You just need to find the 0. So you have to do a simple little factoring and then uh, just pop out the zeros, okay? All right, um, here's another one. So again, look for GCF, 1, 3, 20. So since one of them is 1, there's no number that works. Like only 1 would work. And all of the letters, well, this one doesn't have a letter. So nothing can be divided out, okay? So then we just jump right to this uh, adding and multiplying step. Okay, so this is going to be your adding number, and this is going to be your multiply number. Okay, so let's go through. Okay, so we have to add to 3, and we have to multiply to 20. What two numbers are going to work with these conditions? Okay, so uh, again, you have 1 times 20. You have 2, which doesn't make 3. 2 times 10. Nope, that won't work. 3. Uh, what else is here? 3 doesn't work. 4, 4 and 5. Okay, will that work? Nope. Um, and I think that's it. Those are the only factors that we have. Okay, so we have uh, looked at every single factor that we can think of that would multiply to make 20, but nothing works to make 3. Okay, so just make sure you list all the factors off. Make sure you checked everything. Um, and yes, nothing works to make 3. So in this case here, um, we can't factor this. Okay, so you can just say can't be factored. So that happens sometimes, um, but then you're like, well, so how am I supposed to find the zeros? You can't. So I'm going to show you why you can't right now. Let's graph this one. Uh, so we have x squared 3x
Okay, so we have um, x, yeah, x squared plus 3x. Okay, so now let's look at it. Where is it? Oh, I've got to zoom out here. There it is, right there. Okay, so here's a parabola that is uh, y equals x squared plus 3x uh, plus 20. So it still is a parabola. Um, you can't factor it um, with the methods that I've shown you so far. So uh, what um, happens now is just that um, your parabola is still on the graph here. It's still doing what it needs to do. But then see how it doesn't touch the x-axis at all? And that's why we can't get um, some values that'll work here. Okay, so you can't, it can't be factored. There's nothing, there are no x-intercepts here. Okay, so since it can't be factored, you would write, okay, there's no zeros. Like that, okay? All right, uh, let's move on to this last one here, and uh, then we'll get to the next example. All right, so um, you've seen some really nice numbers here so far. Okay, you haven't seen ones with decimals. So even if it is a decimal, I want you to look at this first term here, and I want you to just take that out as the value for the GCF. Okay, so you're going to take out negative 4.9, okay? All right, uh, but then on top of it, uh, look for any x's that um, are available. So see how they both have um, x's, and then so the lowest, uh, simplest one is just the x. So this is your greatest common factor now. Okay, so you're going to go through, and you're going to actually divide out by negative 4.9x for both of them. Okay, and if you do that, uh, you're going to write the negative 4.9 out here, oh, and the x as well, and then just clean it up, okay? So you have uh, 4.9 and 4.9 will cancel out, so then it leaves x squared divided by x, leaves 1x. 22.54 uh, divided by negative 4.9 will make negative 4.6, okay? x divided by x is gone. All right, and then that leaves, uh, it's factored now, okay? So I know it looks a little messier than the other ones because it has lots of decimals, but um, you have your factors. So all you have to do, what do you do when it's like, like that X? Don't worry about the stuff being here, but when it's just an X in front like that, what was the zero? It ends up being zero. And then this one here, what do you always do when you have a number in here? You pop out the opposite sign, so it'll be positive and then just write the number that's in there, 4.6. Okay, and that's it. That's all you have to do for the ones that look messy like that with lots of uh, decimals, okay? Last one now. Um, so again, our goal is just to find the zeros. I know we're using decimals here and you know graphing it and finding it that way, but again, I want you to get to the point where you can just look at the equation, do, some, do, do a little bit of algebra work, and then you should be able to find uh, the x-intercepts that way as well, okay? All right, and then you can use decimals to double check. So. Um, here is this one now. It looks different from what we had above here because this is the standard form. They call this the standard form. There's no brackets, right? There's an x squared, x, a number. Sometimes one of them's missing, but it's still the standard form. So uh, now we're going to look at the vertex form again. This is kind of the first form that we studied for the quadratics. So all you're going to do is you're going to go from the vertex form and get it to the standard form, okay? So we did that this uh, did this the other day as well. So we're gonna go from there to there, and then we're gonna factor it, okay, to get to the zeros. So let's go and do that right now. So um, so here's the first, uh, here's the, just the one example here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna expand it out. Remember, you're gonna FOIL it out, multiply it out. So you wanna start by writing this part here twice, okay? All right, and then I want you to just take care of this x plus 4 times x plus 4 right now. So don't worry about the 3, don't worry about the 108 right now. Just leave them out. So I'm just going to leave them out here. And now, remember, you're going to use like FOIL. So first, that's x squared. Outer. 4x. Inner. And last, okay. So and then leave the 108 out. So, uh, so again, this is the foil way, and then just clean it up. Okay. 
okay, and you get to here. And then the next step is to multiply this three in. Okay, so we wanna get rid of these brackets. So this is kind of our next step on getting rid of the brackets here. Multiply that three into everybody. Okay, so three times x squared is three x squared. Three times eight is 24 x. Three times 16 is 48. And then the 108 that we've left outside. Now we can take care and put these two together, okay? And then rewrite it. So y equals Oops. Okay, so 48 comes in, battles 108. Okay, 108 is negative. The negatives are going to win because there's more of them. So how many are they going to win by? 60. Like that. Okay, so now we went from the vertex form okay, to the standard form. So, um, so what you did here the other day when you made it look like this, this is actually the factored form. Okay, so we can even, if we wanted to give everyone a name, this is the factored form. Okay. All right, so we're going to do that. Um, I'm just going to just do this question here on the side uh, using the area model too, because I know a lot of you like to use that. So back here, we wrote it twice. And then for the students that like to use area models, so just draw your box in and then go x plus 4, x plus 4, like that. And then, um, <clears throat> then just multiply into the boxes x squared, 4x, 4x, and 16. Okay, so you multiply it in. Now take it out of the box. Remember to add these two middle ones together. And uh, then you get to there, okay? So once you get that, I want you to put, you know, change this part. It's almost like go from this step to that step now, okay? All right, and then continue and then get to here. All right, so now that we got from vertex to standard form, I want you to find the zeros. So like I said, when you ever see it in this form, you have to factor it out. Okay, so let's do that here. So again, step one, I want you to think about what's the GCF here. Okay, so you have, uh, look at the smallest number, three. Okay, so three can divide out of 24 and it can divide out of 60. All right, any letters? No, so just three. So you're going to divide a 3 to everybody here. Okay, write the 3 there. All right, so 3 divided by 3 is x squared. 24 divided by 3 is 8x. 60 divided by 3 is going to be negative 20, like that. Okay? All right, so um, now that we have that factored out, we can do the adding and multiply table, right? So this is the one that we have to add to. This is the number we have to multiply to. Okay, so let's write that over here. So we need to add to positive 8. We need to multiply to negative 20. Okay, so let's think of two numbers that can work for 20 here. So 1 times 20. Okay, no, that can't make 8. 2 times 10. Oh, actually, if we subtract them, we could make 8, right? So um, so we know we have the right numbers, and so we just got to figure out the sign here. So see, that's negative 20, so that means one of them has to be negative. Okay, so we can write them both. And um, after a while, after doing this quite a bit, you'll find that, oh, if it's a positive on this side, the bigger number has to be positive. Okay, so if you take these two and add them, you'll make 8. Okay, so anyway, but if you just want to write them all out, that, that works as well. All right, 2 and negative 2 and positive 10 works, so let's write this out here. Okay, so if we see a negative, we just put it in as minus 2, and this one is positive 10. Okay, and so now you're at the factored form. Okay, so I know a lot of work here, but you've learned a lot of different forms now, learned a lot of different concepts, so uh, we can get to here. And our new thing that we're learning today is that you have to tell me the zeros. Okay, so here are the two. Don't worry about this three, right? If there was an x out here, yes, then deal with it, but there's no x here. Um, just look at the x's here, and remember the opposite, okay? If you see negative two, the zero will be positive two. This one, 
uh, plus 10, so that means negative 10. And so these are your zeros, okay? Which also means x intercepts. Okay, so let's go and graph it just to double check that everything looks good. So I'm going to put in uh, the original formula here, okay? So uh, let's type that in. So y equals 3 times x plus 4 squared minus 108. Okay, and I'll just turn off the other one I had on there. Okay, oops, turn it off by clicking on the circle. Okay, so here it is. We're just going to zoom in. Okay, so again, to zoom in and out, you can use these plus and minus, or you can, uh, if you have a mouse with a roller, you know, roll it one way or the other. Okay, so look, whoops, too, too close, too close. Okay, so just hover over, negative 10, positive 2. Okay, so let's look here. Yes, negative 10, positive 2. So we got them right. Okay, so that's what, that's all you're doing today. That's the new part here where you're uh, just going through and trying to find the zeros. So when it's set up nicely like this, you can just pop them out. Okay, and watch out for these ones where it's just x, just that becomes zero, that becomes negative six. Um, here it takes a bit more work. You have to factor it first, right? Find your greatest common factor, then do the adding multiplying table. Okay, find your factors and then pop out the zero. And the longest question is when it's in vertex form, okay, go to vertex form to standard form, okay, by multiplying out. Then from standard form, go to the factor form by using the, the adding multiply table. Then you can get to your zeros here. Okay, so hopefully that was enough uh, examples. If not, just let me know, email me. Um, I can meet with you too and show you how to do these. And um, yeah, just practice a few and then try the checkpoint.